Runners are now being invited forward. Flags are up. And they're off for the William Hill Roland Merrick Handicap Steeplechase, our feature race of the day here at Weatherby. And heading on towards fence at number one of 17, good boy Bobby along the inside of Lord Dumain Neal without wider, Howdy Glenn, who landed a little bit steeply but is alongside as they head on down towards the winning post with two further circuits ahead of them. Taking risks is in fourth early. Then Topville Ben along the inside of Silver Hallmark Empire Steel and out wider Windsor Avenue and Lakeview Lad. So they're tightly grouped as they turn left-handed and race out towards the far side, being led by good boy Bobby, the rehearsal chase runner-up from a few weeks ago and shows in front, looking for another win here at Weatherby this season, good boy Bobby, ahead of Lord de Menil in second, then in third, the 2019 winner of this race, Topville Ben, who races a further half-length in advance of the Ladbrokes Trophy winner, Cloudy Glenn, who is in at fourth. Windsor Avenue, third in this race last year, is along the inside of Lakeview Lad. Lakeview Lad, who won this race in 2018, as they come over the first in the back straight. Empire Steel, the pink and light green silks, towards the inside of the former Scottish Grand National winner taking risks. And the favourite, Silver Hallmark, is the back marker as they come over an open ditch. They're all over it safely. Good boy Bobby up front gave that fence plenty of air and heads on now towards the fourth obstacle. This is plain and gets over safely. And that time, Windsor Avenue was noticeably slower than everything else in the race as they now race on towards the final fence over in the back straight for the first time. Good boy Bobby over that a length ahead as they now race towards the end of the back straight. They bypass the open ditch over at the end of the back. And good boy Bobby is around about a length ahead here under Sam Twiston Davis to Lord de Menil, a horse who stays particularly well, the purple and yellow jacket over towards the inside of Cloudy Glen. Then Topville Ben, ahead of Empire Steel, Lakeview Lad, taking risks, Silver Hallmark, now level with Windsor Avenue at the back of the field. There's only around about six or seven lengths covering them though as they race towards the completion of the first third of their journey and back on into the home straight with good boy Bobby showing narrowly in front here, racing with enthusiasm as is usually the case. And towards the inside, Lord de Menil, they are the first two. Followed into the home straight in third by Cloudy Glen. In fourth is Topville Ben, and then the other former winner, Lakeview Lad, down the outside of both taking risks and Empire Steel, and then Windsor Avenue. And the quietly ridden silver hallmark, Adam Wedge, happy to bide his time. That one over towards the inside, the blue colors the famous Rucker Silks, as they continue their journey back down towards us on the opening occasion. Still well in excess of a circuit ahead of the field. All over that safely, Cloudy Glen just jumping up into the back of Lord Dominial somewhat there as good boy Bobby continues his merry way on towards the eighth fence. Into the bottom of it, the leader, but safe from Lord Dominial. Topville Ben along the inside of Empire Steel and Cloudy Glen. Windsor Avenue just Hitting a bit of a flat spot at the back as they take the fence, which will be the last in a circuit. All over it safely and taking risks now also briefly off the bridle. They're at halfway in the William Hill Roland Merrick, a circuit left to go. And good boy Bobby under Sam Twist and Davis takes them under the judge's nose. A neck or so to the good over Lord de Menil in second. Back in third, Cloudy Glen. Then Empire Steel and Topfield Ben from Lakeview Lad, who's traveling well. Silver Hallmark likewise is next. A neck away to Windsor Avenue and taking risks. It looks as if he's going to be pulled up at the back. He just started to lose a bit of ground taking risks and Sean Quinlan decides that he goes no further. So taking risks is out of the race. Was pulled up before jumping fence number 10, which they are well and truly on their way to. It's about another 150 yards or so off and Lord de Menil along the inside of good boy Bobby. They are the first two. Topfield, Ben and Cloudy Glen are in third and fourth. Lakeview Lad in fifth, out wider of them. As they come over the first at going down the back, Lakeview Lad perhaps a little slow that time. Empire Steel is next. And then a gap of another couple of lengths back to Silver Hallmark and Windsor Avenue. Final open ditch now. Lord de Menil matching strides with good boy Bobby. Cloudy Glen close up in behind them. Topfield, Ben along the inside, still moving with purpose as well. 
Then Empire Steel as they come over the third fence down the back. A bit of a mistake though there from Empire Steel. Lakeview Lad is the latest to come off the bit. Silver Hallmark still with plenty more in front than behind. And Windsor Avenue the back marker as they take the final fence over in the back straight. That was five from home. They've got three quarters of a mile left to go in the Roland Merrick. And it is good boy Bobby in the green. The white sleeves to the inside of Cloudy Glen. With close up in behind them, Empire Steel, the light green sleeves on pink. A little wider out, Lord de Menil now coming under a ride. Topville Ben is in fifth place as they now make the left-handed turn. Lakeview Lad is under strong pressure back in behind them. Silver Hallmark is also working hard and has loads to do. And Windsor Avenue at the back. Good boy Bobby with Empire Steel now moving through into second place. Looks very threatening. Cloudy Glen is now off the bridle towards the inside of Topfield Ben, who's in the red and yellow. Then Lord de Menil around the outside. As they're galloping back towards the entrance to the home straight, they've got half a mile left to go. Lakeview Lad is plodding on at the moment back in at fifth place now, just overtaking Cloudy Glen as they swing on in and pulled up at the back of the field, Windsor Avenue. And I don't think Silver Hallmark will be going much further either. They've got four to jump, still good boy Bobby. To the inside is Empire Steel, who's trying hard to press as they come down to four from home. Good boy Bobby on the left. Oh, and Empire Steel is down. Empire Steel is a faller when pretty much level with good boy Bobby. So good boy Bobby left clear of Lord de Menil and Topfield Ben as they go towards the third last. Lakeview Lad is back in behind them, another eight or nine lengths down. Good boy Bobby with Lord de Menil rallying in the center and the former winner Topfield Ben over to the inside, back on his A game today. They head towards the second last. It's still Bobby. Good boy Bobby just ahead. In the center is Lord de Menil. Topfield Ben away to the right and they remain clear of Lakeview Lad. It's a slow motion finish to the William Hill Roland Merrick handicap chase. Three of them in a line coming to the last. Good boy Bobby is very brave in front. He heaved himself over the final obstacle ahead of Lord de Menil in second. Topfield Ben is back in third. They're going up and down on the spot. Good boy Bobby is all heart here. Her heart as big as a lion, good boy Bobby. And he's gonna see them off. Good boy Bobby goes on to win the Roland Merrick. Such a tough performance. He beats into second place Lord de Menil with back in third Topfield Ben and in fourth Lakeview Lad. The William Hill Roland Merrick is went away for Good Boy Bobby, written by Sam Twiston Davis, stepping in for Daryl Jacob. Well done, he, he loves it here. That was a good performance. Yeah, incredibly tough, obviously. Um, you're in a position like that, you grab it with both hands and wish Daryl back as quick as we can. But even so, from a family point of view, to train big winners of Simon and Isaac or any winner it is a very privileged position to be in. So when you go and nick a big one, it just makes it a little bit extra special. Deeper than you look, I'd say, looking at it on paper before. And I thought he'd done well because you got racing, or you got taken on a fair way down, and he looked a little bit keen, was he? Yeah, it was. It's kind of it, you could read it in the kind of the makeup of the race before how it might work out with Lord de Menso, a very strong stare. Mm. And if I was on the front end, he was always going to press me. So kind of knew it was going to be in that position, but just hoped and tried to believe in what, what Bobby could do. And he saw it out really well. Incredibly tough performance. And, Obviously, a lot of respect for Dad, and obviously Anthony Bromley does the race planning to find this and, and as a suitable target, and thankfully it's worked. I wonder if Dad telling you about Bindari and Air Summit <laughs> and comparing them to Aintree Grand National winners well, in the past. He, he's, he looks that sort of profile. He's keen, he said he's keen to have a go, and he, yeah. he's the man that knows how to train a national winner, so if he's got belief in him, then I'd like to see, see how he can get on. But first and foremost, is any time you ride beside Simon Isaac and Daryl's not here, you just... Hopefully he mends quick and is back in the position to have the conversation. But if not, then sure, he'd be a lovely, lovely ride to have. He would be. He, he's a horse that doesn't mind ground as well, near heavy today. Yeah, he's from Fleming Surf, so he's well, well able yeah. to deal with that. And then at the same time, he was good here at Good to Soft over two and a half early in the season. So it shows how versatile he is. And he's got a lot better with age, is what I would say. And um, fingers crossed, not done yet. Excellent performance. Well done. Thank you very much. Cheers, bro.